what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be learning how to create a snack bar uh, otherwise known as a toast in your app so here's the app we're going to be making we've got these two buttons when we tap on one of them we see we get this little alert looking thing down here it's called a toast or a snack bar people call it different things and uh, if we hit this one we see a different one down here so it's configurable with uh, the view model pattern so we'll look at that. And the other cool thing is we can actually configure it. So this one here is a simple info alert and you know we can't really tap on it and do anything. However, this one is uh, actionable. So we can tap on it in our case with showing an alert. Of course, in the real world, in your real app, you can do whatever you want it to do. Uh, but we're gonna take a look at doing that. And of course it fully supports light mode and dark mode. So it looks awesome in both themes as all of your apps should nowadays as well as this one. So yeah, this is what we're gonna be building from scratch. Get excited, make sure you destroy that like button for the YouTube algorithm, super appreciate it, helps out the channel a lot. If you're a returning viewer, hit subscribe while you're at it if you've been enjoying the content. Get Xcode ready, get excited, let's dive right into it. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're gonna start by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We will stick with an app over here and let's go ahead and give this a name. So I'm gonna call this Snack Bar. Make sure you have your language set to Swift. Lifecycle should be UI Kit and interface should be Storyboard. Let's go ahead and continue. Let me save it on my desktop and let's dive right in. So first things first, let me pick a simulator over here and hit the run button to get this app loaded up into the simulator. And while it's doing that, let me also expand my Xcode window here to give ourselves a little more room to work. And there is our app right there, launched nice and quick, empty app, okay. So we're gonna design, as you saw in the beginning, two different types uh, rather, one snack bar that's configurable in two different ways, uh, either with an image uh, and some text or a button style. So first and foremost in the controller, we want to have two buttons that we can tap to demo both of those styles. So what I'm going to do in here is create two buttons in a for loop. So I'm going to say for x in 0 uh, to 2, so 0 and 1. We're going to create two buttons here. We're going to say button equals a UI button and we want to create it with a frame and X is going to be 20, Y will be uh, 30, width will be the width of the screen. So view.frame.size.width minus uh, two times X so it's centered and the height will be 55. Next we're going to want to add this as a sub view. The reason I'm doing it in a for loop is just for uh, simplicity's sake. So we have to write less code. We're gonna wanna assign a tag so when the function is called, we can distinguish which function was called. I am also going to give it a background color of system blue. And we actually need to adjust this frame here so the buttons don't overlap. And what we wanna adjust is the Y position actually. So, we're gonna say this is 30 as a buffer uh, times CG float of X multiplied by the height of each button, so 55 uh, plus CG float of X times 10. So it gives us a 10 point buffer between both buttons. And let's see, let's uh, add a title to this. So we're gonna set a title and it's going to be uh, show snack bar. And I'm just gonna put X plus one in here for the different types. 
And before we run it to make sure these buttons show up, let me go ahead and set a title color to be white for normal. So go ahead and hit Command R to build and run, and we should see two buttons here. They're a little big and they're a little too close to the top, so let's bump this to 130, so they're a little further down, like, like that, beautiful, okay. Um, now we also wanna create an action to show the snack bar. So we're gonna create a uh, Objective-C annotated private function, and it's gonna be did tap button with a sender property, and the sender will be the UI button that invoked it. And the reason we pass in the sender is so we can check the tag on it. So if the tag is one, the first button was tapped, else second button was tapped. And of course we wanna hook it up to the button. So we're gonna say button, add target, self, action is a selector for a did tap button. And the event is going to be touch up inside. So cool. So there's our buttons we're going to use to actually show the snack bar. Let's talk about actually creating the snack bar. So the snack bar is nothing more than a view that needs to be uh, configurable with a view model. So for those of you familiar with the MVVM view pattern, we're going to kind of go with that. So let me first start by creating a folder here. And it's a new group, and I'm going to call it a snack bar. And we're going to want two things in here, like I mentioned. The first one is going to be a UI view subclass. So Coco Touch class, it's going to be a subclass of a UI view. And this is going to be a snack bar view. Make sure the language is Swift, of course. And we also want a view model. So this is going to be a Swift file. And I'm simply going to go ahead and call this snack bar view model. And the notion here is we're going to pass in a snack bar view model into the snack bar view. And let me actually get rid of this stuff, the comments and code. And we're going to configure the snack bar view based on what's in the view model. And then we'll finally call a function to uh, you know, go ahead and show that snack bar on our view controller. So let's do the view model first, and that'll kind of give us a good starting place for what things we want to be able to configure in the snack bar view. So in most view models, you generally want to create as a struct, so they're value typed. So let me go ahead and create it and call it snack bar view model. And let's think about the uh, things that we want to be able to configure in the view model. So the first thing we want to configure is the type. So the type is going to be an enum. And we're going to have two different types of uh, snack bar views. And they are going to be uh, an uh, info view or an action view. So an info view is one where, of course, you can just see info. And an action view is where you can tap it and it calls some, some function or some handler. So that's going to be the type. The next thing we're going to want is um, basically the text or uh, the text and or a image for if we want to show an image in our snack bar. So text is going to be a string and it's going to be non-optional because we always want text, right? The only thing that's optional to configure is the image. The next thing we're going to want is a uh, image and this is going to be, as I kind of alluded to, a UI image optional and it's going to complain that it can't find UI image because we would need to import UI kit. And once you import that, this error should go away, like so. And this way, if we pass it an image, we'll configure the snack bar to show the image. And if we don't pass it in, we can just disregard it. So that makes sense. Now, one other thing that we want to consider is if we have an action type, what function do we call? So we could use something like a delegate pattern to call a function. That's a little more setup work. So we're going to use a enum associated value. So what that means is we're going to put a, basically a parameter on this. It's actually called an associated value and it's going to be called handler and it's going to be a closure. So it's going to be uh, a closure that takes no parameters and returns void. And we can actually go ahead and give this a type alias to make it cleaner to read. Handler. And let me type alias that up here, handler to uh, a basic closure. 
it's a little cleaner to read that way. And essentially, these are the things that we need to uh, create a snack bar. So let's go now to our actual snack bar view. Let's put this together. So first and foremost, we want a uh, initializer. So we're going to want to do two things. Uh, we can either create an initializer, uh, which is a custom initializer, or we can override the init with frame initializer. We're going to create a custom initializer since we've got our view model. So we're going to say uh, init with our view model. We're going to create a property on here, which is a view model. And we're going to say self dot view model is view model. Then we want to say uh, super dot init with a frame. And this is simply going to be zero, like so. And we're going to also want the other required initializer, which is what it's complaining about here. So let's hit that and hit this fix button. And it'll bring it in for us directly. Now we also want some sub views on here. So like I said, we're going to have a label, absolutely. And we may or may not have an image. So let's first create a private uh, let label will be a UI label. And we're going to create it in our anonymous closure pattern here. We're going to return label. And let's see, we're going to say label dot text color will be label. So it supports a dark mode. Well, we are going to say label dot number of lines is zero. So it line wraps. And let's, uh, let's see, we'll also say label dot text alignment is centered. And once we uh, create this, uh, you know, create this, uh, view with the initializer, we want to add sub views to it. So the first one we want to add is label. And we're going to create an image view on here too, but this image view is going to be lazy. And lazy basically means we're not going to allocate memory for it unless we know we need it. And of course, the reasoning is we need to check the view model if we want to create an image view before we create it. So let me just go in here and change some of the stuff up a little bit. We're going to say image view dot clips to bounds is true. And image view dot content mode is a scale aspect fit. Let me just do aspect, that one right there. And what we're going to do before we add that as a sub view here is we're going to say uh, if, rather, yeah, we'll say if uh, view model dot image does not equal a nil, then we know we have an image. So we can say add sub view image view. So that's how we basically add the views that we need. Uh, the next thing we want to do is configure these views with the view model. So I'm just going to call a function called configure and we're going to create it right down here to keep our code more uh, modularized and different functions. And first up, we're going to say label dot text is going to be view model dot text. Next, we're going to say label rather image view dot image is going to be view model uh, dot image. And let's see, we're also going to now check in here the type. So we're going to say if now there we'll say switch view model dot type. And there is a uh, action type that passes in a handler. And we're going to say if the action, uh, if this view model has a type of action, we want to do something, right? The do something is we're going to create a private property for the handler and we're going to assign it. So the reason we want to do that is when we tap on the actual, uh, you know, at snack bar, we want to invoke that handler. So we're going to say private var handler is of type handler optional. Remember, this is the type alias we made. So that's how we set that up. So let's see why this is complaining here. So handler should be handler cannot assign to value handler is immutable. So we want to say here self dot handler. So it knows which one we're referring to. Uh, and then in the case of info, we don't want to do anything. So we'll just put a break. And let's see, if we have an action, we also want to add a tap handler to the snack bar. So we're going to first say, uh, is user interaction enabled is true. Then we're going to create a tap gesture, which is going to be a UI tap gesture recognizer. And we're going to create it with a target, which is self. Action will be did tap snack bar. And the following values are uh, default one, but we're just going to assign them for kind of explicit understanding sake. 
Um, before we do that, let me create this function so it stops complaining like that. We're gonna say gesture dot required number. Let's see, we want, I believe it's number, oh, there it is. Number of touches required is one. And the next one is number of taps required is also one. And finally, we're going to add the gesture. So we're gonna say add gesture recognizer, gesture. And in this function, we are basically just gonna call the handler in this, uh, in this class if we have it. So keep in mind it's optional, so we'll just call the handler. So that's how we actually configure with the view model. And the last thing we wanna do in here, or the second to last thing, is lay out our views. So we're gonna override layout subviews and call super layout subviews. And before we actually fill that out, the last thing, the actual last thing we're gonna need is a function on here to show the actual snack bar. And that's gonna be, uh, so we can either do it in here or we can do it in the view controller. I think we can do it in here. So we're gonna say public func uh, show on view controller. So we're gonna put that there and this is where we're gonna animate the actual snack bar. And in layout subviews, let's do this first. So we're gonna say if let, rather, if view model dot image doesn't equal nil, we wanna lay out the label and the image. Otherwise, man, I really can't spell label today, huh? Otherwise, we just wanna lay out the label. So in the labels case, this is pretty easy. We're gonna say label dot frame equals uh, bounds. So basically the label is going to take up the entirety of this view. Pretty straightforward there. In this case, we're gonna have the image on the left and the label is gonna be right next to it. So we'll say image view dot frame is going to be CG rect with a X, Y width and height. We'll give this zero, zero view, rather frame dot uh, height and frame dot height here. That way it'll be a square. Uh, the next thing we wanna do is give the label a frame. So we'll say label.frame is a CG rect as well. X is going to be uh, the width of the image view. So we'll say image view dot frame dot size dot width, Y is zero. Uh, height will simply be the current view's height, frame dot size dot height. And the width is going to be the entire frame's width, subtracting the width of the image view, like so. And before we fill this out, let me do some cosmetic fixes. Uh, in the initializer, we're gonna do some things before we configure. We want to make sure nothing overflows the snack bar. So we'll say clips to bound is true. Let me also give it a corner radius so it's nice and rounded. So I'm gonna say corner radius is going to be eight. We'll say layer dot masks to bounds is also true. You could optionally give it a, uh, a border. We're not gonna do that. And we also wanna give it a background color so we can actually see things on it. So in, the, in this case for a demo, we're gonna always use um, a background color of, let's see, let's use a background color of label. So it'll be the inverse of the main background color in both light mode and dark mode. And let's change the labels text color to be Sista background color. And you guys will see this in action in just a moment. And finally, we want to write the code to actually show this uh, snack bar, and then we can run the app. So here we have uh, this function to show, and let me actually make our lives easier. And instead of doing it in here, let's go back to our view controller, and we'll do it in there. And you guys can figure out how you want to, you know, how you want to structure your own code. So we're going to say func show snack bar. And this is gonna pass in a view, rather let me just pass in a snack bar. And this is gonna be of a snack bar view type. So now when we press on either of the buttons, we wanna create a snack bar. So in the two button cases, the only thing that changes is the view model. So let me say let view model up here is a snack bar view model. This one right here. 
and we're gonna assign it in this one. So we're gonna say in the first buttons case, we're gonna create one of these. The type will be info. The text will be, uh, let's just do hello world. And we don't want an image in this case, or maybe we do. Let's do an image. Let's do a UI image with a uh, image, rather a system image. This one right here, a system name. And I think bell is one of the system icons. So that's how we create that view model. And then in this other one, we also want a view model here, except this one will be with an action. So before we uh, fill out this handler here, which we'll do in a second, let's say, let's call this show alert. And we're not gonna have an image in this case. The handler is simply gonna be a closure and we're gonna say weak self in, that way we don't uh, you know, cause a memory retention cycle. Let me fix my indentation there. And in this case, we're gonna say self dot show alert. And we're gonna create this as a separate function down here. Like so. And we wanna make sure this gets called on the main thread since it is a UI operation. So we're gonna say, let's see, let's be even smarter about this and put this main thread call up here and we're going to call the function on the main thread all ui work should happen on the main thread so we're going to say this is a ui alert controller and we're going to show an alert with a title of it works you tapped the action style will be alert alert like that we're gonna add an action to this alert, and this is simply gonna be an action to get rid of the alert. So title will be dismiss, style will be cancel, and handler will be nil. And finally, of course, we wanna present the alert animated true. So now that we've created the snack bar view models here, we can create a snack bar with said view model. So we're gonna say let snack bar equals uh, snack bar view with a view model, pass in the view model. And finally, to actually present it, we're gonna say show snack bar. We want, let's see, show, show snack bar, pass in the snack bar, and let's finally implement this function. I know we've written a lot of code and not run it once. It's one of those things where you kind of have to do it finish to end, but let's write this and then hit the run button and let's see what it looks like. So first and foremost, we want to uh, give our snack bar um, a frame. So we're gonna say, so snack bar with, uh, we have it with the view model. Let me extend this function to also pass in a frame. So let's go back to uh, our snack bar view here. And in this initializer, we're also gonna pass in a frame for our snack bar. So we'll say a frame is a CG rect and super init, we'll just pass in frame rather than zero. And back in our view controller, let's create this frame. So again, CG rect with a X, Y width and height. X and Y are irrelevant since we're gonna change it in the show function. The width we'll say is the width of the view divided by 1.5. And the height, I'll go ahead and call 60. Now in the show function, we wanna show a cool little animation. So the first thing we wanna do is uh, we wanna make sure that the X and Y are centered, rather the Y is centered uh, horizontally, uh, or the X is centered, sorry, and the Y is off the bottom of the screen. And we're gonna animate the snack bar up and then animate it away. So the first thing we're gonna do is update the frame. So we're gonna say snack bar dot frame equals CG rect. X is going to be, uh, we want it to be centered. Y is gonna be off the screen. Height will keep at 60. The width, let me call this width here. The Y is gonna be the entirety of the height of the screen. And the X is going to be the current views width minus width over two. Let's go ahead and create the width here, which is going to be view.frame.size.width over 1.5. And this is the starting position of our snack bar. The next thing you wanna do is animate it up. So pretty simple. We're gonna say UI view, 
animate with duration. Let's say uh, it takes 0.5 seconds to animate up. And uh, the thing we're gonna change in here again is the frame. So again, it's basically this, but the only difference is the Y changes now to be the height, subtracting 70. The way I got 70 is the height of this is 60 minus 10 for a buffer. And once this completes, we wanna dismiss it with the animation too. So we're gonna say uh, on completion, if it's done, we're going to say, uh, reanimate this, but we wanna, in this case, animate it down. And this just actually sets this. So we wanna actually copy this whole function and put it in here again, grab this, get rid of the completion handler and paste this in here like that. So if you take a look at what's going on here, first we animate this, first we set the frame to the starting position, then we animate it up, and then once it's completed, we animate it down. So we don't wanna animate it down right away, and we see it's actually yelling at us about something here, let's see. So in here, we need to say self dot, since it's in a closure, and we also need to say self dot here, so it's in a, since it's in a closure. Um, but we don't wanna animate it away right away, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is do this and after a delay. So we're gonna say dispatch queue, main, async after, and we're gonna show it for two seconds and then animate it. Um, and actually once it's animated, we can in fact remove it from the view. So we can say snack bar, remove from super view. So once again, I know this has been quite a bit of code without us running it. We're almost there, bear with me, and we'll see our snack bar. And if we have any issues, we'll debug it. So let's see, we created our snack bar here. We never actually added it to the view. So we're gonna first actually in here, we're gonna add it to the view. We're gonna say view, actually let me do it after we set the frame. Say view, add sub view, and this is going to be snack bar. So yeah, that's a lot of work. So let me hit Command R. Let's see if we have any errors. Looks like we don't. Let's hit this button and see what happens. So we see down here a snack bar comes up, then it animates down. So that one had an image. This one comes up and animates down. It's a little slow and it doesn't come up quite as much as I think we would want it to. And the colors also kind of look a little weird. That time I clicked the button twice. So let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. So to animate onto the screen, we're gonna change this first animation to take, let's say point, uh, I don't know, let's do three seconds. To animate away, we're also gonna say point three. And let's see, what more do we wanna do? So 1.5 seems to be uh, a decent amount um, in terms of a division for the width. Let's actually try 1.2 um, and let's also change that in the initializer here, we're gonna change this to be divided by 1.2. And I also think, I think I recall seeing here, the image doesn't look to be framed in the nicest of ways. It takes up quite a bit of the uh, height. So maybe we want to change the height in the snack bar view here. Um, so in here in the layout sub views, for the image, let's go ahead and change this. So let's say this is, a uh, actually five from the left, five from the top. Let's subtract 10 on both of the height and the uh, width. So it's a little smaller. The X in this case, uh, image.frame.size.width should add five to it. So there's some room. And we should also subtract five from the width here. And let me also change the background color in the initializer here. So we're saying background color is label. I'm gonna call this secondary label. So it's a little lighter. And the text color we can keep the same. So let me go ahead and hit Command R now. And let's see what it looks like. So we click on this. We see this comes up. It's definitely a lighter color now. So you might not want it to be like that. Let's actually change this color back. Let's make that label again. And if we jump back to our view controller, let me make the duration a little longer for how long the snack bar shows so we can actually see it for more than two seconds. Um, so we're gonna say now plus, let's do four seconds. 
And if we hit this, we see the snack bar pops up down here, gives the user uh, a bell with this label. And if we hit this one, this one is an action. So if I tap on it, you see we actually get the label, rather the alert popping up here, and we pass this in through the enum. Um, and that's about it. There you have it. That's how you can create a snack bar. The last thing I'm going to call out before wrapping this video up is our view model takes, you know, minimum properties in it, right? We have a type, a text, and an image. If you wanted to expand upon this, you can configure your view model to also take things like background color and label color and font size. And you can make this view very versatile in terms of, um, you know, what it does and how it's presented and how it looks. Um, I know we also only subtract 10 for how high it animates. You could put that in the view model as well. And let's say uh, we did 70, let's do 100. Oops, not 1,000, let's do 100. And you'll see, uh, you know, it really does make a difference as far as like the look and feel. So don't be afraid to customize this to your kind of uh, needs. You can see the image is much better now. It's not as obnoxiously large. Um, and that's it. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't destroyed that like button already, make sure to do so. Leave any comments, questions, concerns down below. Um, I've got a link in, on my community section of the channel. If you guys have any suggestions, you can submit a form and I get uh, you know that suggestion added to the list to make that video for you guys. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit that as well if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.